remembering those who've gone before. This is Stag End. Welcome to Skag End. This is part two of our Holiday Ellsworth family chart. We'll start with Israel Ellsworth Holiday at the center of our chart. Israel is my generation's fourth great-grandfather. We're going to go back into his heritage in the New England colonies. Israel was the son of Samuel Ellsworth II, or Samuel Ellsworth Jr., and Amy Anna Holiday. Samuel was born in 1718 in Windsor, Connecticut, and Amy was born just north of Windsor in Suffield in 1726. They were married in 1746 and had five children. Now, going back through Amy's parents, William Isaac Holliday and Anna Ellis were married in 1702 in Suffield, Connecticut, and they lived there until William died in 1764. William's parents were Walter Holliday and Catherine Hunter, and they were married in 1673 in Springfield, Massachusetts. In the publication, The Wheeler Family of Rutland, Massachusetts, we find that there is little known about Walter Holliday. His name first appears on records at Springfield upon the occasion of his marriage in 1673. However, the book does note that he was descended from Sir John Holliday and his wife, the latter being a sister or niece of Sir William Wallace, the Scotch hero beheaded by the English in 1305. The Holliday coat of arms is still to be seen among those of the other clans at Abbotsford, Sir Walter Scott's old home. So how do they come to this conclusion if there's no proof? Well, here's more from the book. Albert A. Holliday of Bellows Falls, Vermont, a descendant of Walter Holliday, in a letter to the author under the date of May 6, 1900, says, When I was a boy, my father had the old family records of the Holliday and Wallace races dating back hundreds of years, or to the marriage of Sir John Holliday to a sister or niece of Sir William Wallace, Scotland's famous warrior. This record was brought to this country by the Holiday, who first came from Scotland and was, of course, very valuable. Mr. Holiday described the record. It was a roll of paper lengthened out by piecing as it became necessary after succeeding generations and rolled upon a stick, the first part of the roll being very dingy and yellow. It was much worn and yellowed by age, and I went to work and made a copy of it but alas, my father's buildings were burned and nothing saved. When the fire was discovered, Mr. Halliday's father ran first to the hall closet where both the record and the copy were kept in an old hair trunk. But it was too late to save it, and he mourned more for its loss than for all his other property destroyed. This happened over 40 years ago, and I do not think there is another copy in existence. If there is, I would pay well for a copy of it." End quote. Now, let's look through the Ellsworth chart back to Samuel Ellsworth II, and we find him and his son Israel on the payroll of Captain Cooley's company in Colonel Warren's regiment of militia between November 8th to the 13th, 1778. Later, he is on the roll of Colonel Ebenezer Allen's regiment as a sergeant. In his manuscript, Caleb Hendy, who is a grandson of Samuel Ellsworth Jr. and Amy Holliday, gives us a good description of them both. My grandfather, Samuel Ellsworth Jr., at about the age of 30 years or more, married the widow, Amy Matson, by whom he had three children, Samuel, Caroline, and Israel. No others to my knowledge. My grandmother Ellsworth's maiden name was Amy Holliday. My grandmother Ellsworth lived to be 70 or 80 years old and died in this town many years since. She was of dark complexion, black eyes, possessed much veracity, sprightliness, and good sense. My grandfather Ellsworth, Samuel Jr., lived to be 85 years of age and 
died in the town of Arlington in this state. He was of light complexion, blue eyes, middle stature, thick set, firm constitution, of a sedate countenance and much given to study. When young, he worked at the trade of a weaver. His parents gave him but little chance to educate himself, but from his great inclination for knowledge, he by his own exertions acquired a considerable share of information. He calculated almanacs for many years in Connecticut, and some in this state. Several I have now before me which he calculated while in Connecticut, one of which was for the year in which I was born. He was an early settler of this town, practiced the art of land surveying, was proprietor's clerk, also a justice of the peace. He was pious and of the congregational order of Christians. In the time of war, he moved to Arlington. In the time of the Revolutionary War, he lost most of his property and remained there with his son, Samuel, until his death. Samuel's parents were Samuel Ellsworth I and Elizabeth Allen. Elizabeth comes from the Allen family who was very instrumental in the founding of our nation. She was a second cousin to Colonel Ethan Allen and Colonel Ebenezer Allen of Revolutionary War fame. Her great-grandfather, John Allen, was one of many of our ancestors who came from Braintree, England, and eventually settled in Windsor, Connecticut in 1635. His own son, John, Elizabeth's grandfather, was killed in an Indian ambush in King Philip's War. He was one of the 77 men who died at Bloody Brook on September 18, 1675. King Philip's War was named for Metacom, the Wampanoag chief who also used the English name Philip. You can read more about it in the link below. Caleb Hendy describes Samuel Ellsworth and Elizabeth Allen. My grandfather Ellsworth's father and mother I well recollect to have seen when I was a small boy. They then lived in East Windsor, Connecticut. He was a large man, bony, and extremely muscular and athletic, said to be a match for any man in the county when in his prime. He was more than six feet high and well made. He engaged, with no other weapon than an axe, a bear in the woods and killed it alone and brought it home. It weighed 18 score. His Christian name I never knew. His wife was a small woman and short of stature. Her maiden name I have forgotten, but believe it was Alan. One of the more interesting facts is that Samuel and Elizabeth Ellsworth were members of the Congregational Church located in Windsor. The minister of the church was Timothy Edwards, father of the well-known Jonathan Edwards, who is known for his sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Samuel was six years older than Jonathan Edwards, so there's little doubt that they knew each other. Samuel's parents were Josiah Ellsworth Jr. and Martha Gaylord, who were married in 1679. They lived in Windsor, Connecticut. Josiah was chosen as the Constable of Windsor in 1696. Martha was a daughter of Samuel Gaylord and Martha Hull, who came to the colonies in 1630 aboard the ship Mary and John, landing at Boston Harbor, Massachusetts. Josiah's parents were Sergeant Josiah Ellsworth from Cambridgeshire, England, and Elizabeth Holcomb, who came from Windsor. They were married in 1654 in Windsor, Connecticut. Sergeant Josiah Ellsworth was one of the founders of the historic First Church of Windsor and is buried there in the cemetery next to it. Elizabeth's father, Thomas Holcomb, arrived in 1630 from Devon, England on the Mary and John. Sergeant Josiah arrived in Connecticut from Cambridgeshire, England in 1645 when he was 16. Josiah purchased a lot in Windsor on which a home was later built that passed down through several Ellsworth generations, including Chief Justice Oliver Ellsworth. 
Chief Justice Oliver Ellsworth is my generation's second cousin seven times removed. In 1903, Mrs. John Holcomb, a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, said of the property, quote, Rarely does it fall to the lot of any house to enjoy such a felicitous history as this Ellsworth homestead. Standing amidst the broad acres purchased in 1665 by Josias Ellsworth, it became a century later the abode of a good and great man, Oliver Ellsworth, and Abigail Walcott, his wife, end quote. The house was passed down through an unbroken line of Ellsworth generations until the last owner died. Then it was deeded, free of charge, to the Connecticut Daughters of the American Revolution. To this day, it is known as the Ellsworth Homestead and can be toured in Windsor. Since towns like Windsor were very small in population in the newly founded colonies, most marriages were local. So if you find one ancestor in a pilgrim town, you're likely to find several. We have quite a few ancestors who were early townsfolk of Windsor, Connecticut, including the surnames Allen, Ellsworth, Ferguson, Gaylord, Hannum, Holcomb, Hull, and Walter. Some in the list are recorded as founders of Windsor. To find out more about historic Windsor, check out the Windsor Historical Society on the link below. Well, that's all for now. I hope to create some more in-depth personal sketches of some of our ancestors in this chart. Thank you for watching. Thanks for remembering those who've gone before.